Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ruffle Rallet, and welcome to one of the most interesting runs I've done in Pokemon Fire at Leaf Green. And this is a challenge run that I think you guys will enjoy. So, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, there's a big thank you to two different people I want to give before we get into this. First of all, big thank you to Niels, because he was the one who actually did this little hack here, who actually put Score Bunny into the game for us. So, big thank you to him, and also a big thank you to my friend Mudkip Memo for coming to me with this idea. Actually, I came to him because he had a cool idea and he was doing like like a Wooloo run, which you definitely should check out. And I was like, hey man, you know, I was thinking about maybe doing a Soul Ball run. And he's like, hey, do a Score Bunny run instead. That could be more fun. And I was like, you know what? It's worth a try. Let's go for it. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we are doing a Score Bunny run. And, ladies and gentlemen, the rules are pretty simple. We have to complete the whole game only with Score Bunny. We're allowed to use other Pokemon for HMs and that sort of stuff. And, of course, the biggest rule of them all, we're not allowed to use items in battle, only outside of battle. So, if, you know, if we do the Elite Four, Oh, something like that. We're only allowed to use them after we've, like, defeated the, a trainer or something. Not during battle at all. So those are the basic rules, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, the game starts off pretty solidly. We call ourselves Ruffle as usual. Not Ruffle Rally, because apparently we can't fit that in there, but that's totally fine. And our rival is Memo in this game, because I thought, hey, it'd be fun to call him Memo. It could be entertaining. Would be something interesting and a cool name to give him. And, of course, what's really funny is that Niels went the extra mile for this little run of ours and actually added... All the starters, all the 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 all the Galar starters, both Grookey, Scorbunny, and Sobble, all three of them were added in the game, so they actually will be seen in this run a few times, or at least you'll see them in the start here. Um, you'll see that we actually do, you know, encounter them and whatnot, and you actually do see a few trainers running around them, because basically what's happened is that we've kind of switched out the files and whatnot. So first things first, we choose Scorbunny. I decided to just call it Scorbunny because just felt like it was the most solid name, and it would look really cool at the end when we actually complete the game, you know, just seeing Score Bunny on, you know, like, uh, the, the finish screen, so to say, so I thought it would be a really cool way to do it. And of course, the first battle against our boy here isn't too big of a deal, it doesn't end up being too troublesome, it is the first one. Of course, winning this first battle is always really useful for you, because you get that extra, you know, e you know experience points, and basically the extra EXP helps you out, so you can easier get, like, through the uh, Viridian Forest, get the extra experience points, and just make your way to Brock, which, you know, it's really solid. Always a worthwhile thing to do. Of course, we go through the general stuff here. Defeat this uh, Sobble pretty solidly. Of course, it's, you know, switched out files and whatnot. So, it's a Sobble and it's got the general moveset of, like, other water Pokemon. And you'll see as we get on here. But, we go through the Viridian Forest, of course, for grinding. It's really useful here to go through it. As you're going through it, I would recommend, if you're doing such a run like this, with a single Pokemon, make sure to grind up here. Especially if you're going with the Fire-type choice, usually Charmander, right? You want to make sure that you make sure to get the EXP points from this forest. It is highly recommended, I will say. Highly recommended you do that because it will just benefit you in the long run. It will just be more useful. You'll have more experience points to work with. It will be so much more handy in your play through that uh, you'll, you'll benefit far more from it and if you just kind of like skipped all of them. Of course here we see the antidote as per usual. I always remember that item, it's always there, that one antidote. I even remember it from like specifically Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eve, even there, that antidote is still just standing there. Same as always, nothing too crazy. But yeah, as recommended, when you get that ember, just start firing it off at everything in Viridian Forest. It's literally made for grinding for the fire type starter. It's like the perfect place to do grinding. You've got Pokemon that can't even do damage to you there as well. So it's great, you got Metapod, Kakuna, etc. that just, just are there, and it's free experience points, so highly recommended, battle everything you see, like I took on this trainer who's kind of looking into the wall, like you'll never really run into him otherwise unless you talk to him specifically and challenge him, as a, you know, in, in general sense, right, so really worthwhile to go that extra mile, and of course, as you can see, it's a lonely nature one, uh, the, the sprite looks great, I'll link down below the source to the sprite, it'll be linked in the description down below if you guys want to check it out, but yeah, so, once you're done with the Radiant Forest, we head in to take on Brock now, I actually had to take him on twice, the first try didn't go too well, but on the second try, we're around level 15, we go for embers mainly, because that's all that really does damage, scratch isn't gonna do really much, uh, and unfortunately, we didn't end up having, like, double kick on our, uh, score bunny here, but luckily, the burn comes through, and that's enough to get rid of his Onyx, which is perfect because that lets us just move on from this point, which is great because I didn't want to spend too much time on Brock. And I know that the two first gym leaders are always really hard for the people who choose the Fire-type starter in Kanto. And uh, we just got through that pretty solidly. But next up, though, uh, before we took on Misty, we actually took on our rival again, you know, on the kind of like the, the Nugget Bridge. Uh, we took him on there and I actually lost against him about four times, I will say. I'm not even gonna lie. I lost about to him to four times because he had that Sobble and his Sobble was really strong. So once we got rid of him, though, once we defeated him, I went through the whole Nugget Bridge, got all the stuff I needed in terms of, uh, you know, 
basically all the experience points we needed, and then we went and took on Misty, and Misty was troublesome, but luckily, we picked up Mega Punch from those two guys that stand, like, when you exit, like, Mount Moon. We got Mega Punch from there, so that was enough to get through her Pokemon, which was really necessary. At this point, we're done with, you know, the first two gyms, we make our way to the SSN, and we just go around again, doing extra grinding, it's always necessary, and also at this point, like, after this, we end up, you know, getting cut, you know, after we defeat our, you know, arrival, which we'll do in a second, but before we do that, of course, uh, we had to go and find a Pokemon to just get the HM on, uh, you know, cut, and we ended up actually catching a Meowth. Big thank you again to Memo there, because he actually told me, like, hey, man, uh, you know, because I was actually doing this a little bit during stream, he was like, hey, man, check out, the, you know, uh, the route above, like, um, you know, uh, Vermilion or whatever, uh, just check it out and you'll find yourself a Meowth and just go for it and you know, that's all you need. And I was like, okay, cool. And I go went for it and actually we found it. So, was pretty solid. We again took out, you know, our rival here, Memo. Wasn't too hard this time around. Uh, though I will point out it got a little bit harder later. Now, the easiest gem battle of them all was definitely this one. Um, so I will, you will notice it's a bit of a laggy because when I was recording this, my PC was having like a little bit of a breakdown. You could kind of say wasn't doing too great, so that was a little bit unsolid, but that was okay. Not, not a big deal. We then make our way to the next gym leader, of course, Erica. Again, a pretty solidly easy and not too difficult challenge, I must say. It was pretty straightforward, pretty easy, pretty solid. Again, uh, these few gyms, like after the first two gyms, it is really not that hard between those two. So yeah, next up though, of course, was one of the rocket hideouts at this one. We just didn't have too much of a trouble. We went up against Giovanni in here as well at one point. Um, you know, a little bit later at towards the end here. We actually take on Giovanni and he ends up being uh, pretty, pretty solid and easy to take on. We didn't even have like full HP or anything. We actually had a PP on Flamethrower, which wasn't too big of a deal. We just went for other stuff. You know, we had Mac, Mac you know, Mega Punch or whatever uh, and Flame Wheel. And I actually had a lot of like fire type moves. Like it was crazy amount of fire type moves, which only really changed towards the end with the Elite Four. That's the only time where we actually had to like change things around. But we made through, you know, Giovanni pretty solidly. We jumped there from that point over to, of course, Koga. Now, funny thing about Koga is I actually didn't end up healing or anything. I just went into him with low HP from his little grunts and whatnot. Just went straight in with low HP and all that without any, like, concern for winning or losing. And I actually somehow did it here with a lucky shot there. Of course, the poison does get us, but honestly, it wasn't that big of a deal. I really thought it was going to go worse, but that was probably the easiest battle I've ever had out of all these. Like, that one and Surge were probably the easiest. Next up was going to be Sabrina. One that I was really worried about because I thought maybe we won't make it. But luckily, though, we were so high grind at this point, like level 63, and everything she used was like 38, 43, etc. Just solidly get through, you know, got through all of that just with flamethrowers back and forth. Now, finally... We had, oh, uh, this, this, this one. Okay, I lost this one on the first try. But on the second try, try, we got Blaine. Now, the biggest problem, of course, is he's got Fire-type Pokemon, right? So, Fire-types create a little bit of an issue for me, of course. It's it's not that easy of a thing to run through. Um, but we didn't do it on the first try, though. The second try, uh, pretty solidly ran through him, defeated his team. Of course, the Arcanine came in as a problem. And actually, Arcanine was one of the biggest problems for this, through this whole playthrough because that was what Memo used in our final battle, as you will see later on. Uh, it just created a lot of problems. Now, finally, for Jim Lee, Leaders was Giovanni. He was a pretty easy one. Just snap, snap, done. Not a problem whatsoever. And then we come into the more, uh, how do I say this properly? The more troublesome area of our little run here, which was, of course, Memo like prior to becoming a champion. So this is the battle right before you go to Victory Road. Now I lost about maybe five times to him here, I give or take. And the biggest problem was his Blastoise. Now of course, Blastoise here is basically his Sobble, but we didn't actually change the file so that the Sobble will actually like, you know, stay as a Sobble and not evolve. The actual Pokemon ended up evolving into what it's meant to be, which is meant to be, you know, a War Turtle and then a Blastoise. So we somehow got through that though, and we got all the way through the Victory Road. But in the Victory Road, I had to grind like crazy. Like, I had to go crazy grinding just to be able to have, like, enough, just enough, so that we would be solidly able to take on this lady. Now, Lorelei was not that difficult. I thought she was going to be a bigger problem, because think about it, we're coming in against her, she's got a bunch of water-type-esque Pokemon, right? And we're coming in with a fire type. Like, I was so worried. But we went for the Mega Punch on Dugong in the start here. Took about, you know, more than half health, give or take, you know, up and down. Depends on how you look at it. But it did a solid amount of damage, honestly. It was not too bad. Um, and luckily... It wasn't too hard, and that made our little, like, playthrough here much more of a breeze, I will say. So, we went through her team, um, we missed a few, like, right there, for example, we missed the Flame, uh, the Fire Blast and whatnot, which, Fire Blast was one of our biggest problems because of the low PP count on it, but also it was our strongest move, um... 
its accuracy was a little bit of a worry as well. So I was really worried about, th you know, throughout this whole playthrough, how we're going to handle the Elite Four with specifically all these fire type moves, because we know there's going to be Pokemon that will, you know, not be easily defeated in this sort of situation. But Laurel ends up being pretty solid. Then next up, this was one that we just went through in one try, I'm pretty sure. I think we just defeated him in like the first attempt. Um, it wasn't too hard, it wasn't too difficult. It was a pretty straightforward battle, I must say. Um, not that difficult, I, I must say. Like, I think he probably, I, I, I would probably say, out of all the Elite Four, I think Bruno is definitely the just like easiest one out of them. Um, you just need like one move that can just, you know, kind of swipe through all of his team. Um, and we kind of had that. Now, I initially uh, was kind of worried about, you know, how we're going to handle this considering I'm low on PP and like, you know, we may have to like use some of our ethers uh, outside of battle because we only had like about three to four ethers to use. Um, so we kind of had to go for that. But it wasn't too big of a deal, and of course, next up was the easiest Elite Four, I would say, which was Agatha. Uh, we just had to Fire Blast through majority of our team. It was pretty solid, honestly. Not too big of a deal. Um, but yeah, we, we, we kind of went through our team in, in an easy manner, to say the least. I, I, must, I must point out, it was really not as difficult as I was worried about, because I thought, oh no, she's got fire types, we'll be able to make it through. Or not fire types, but ghost types, rather. You know, I was kind of worried about that whole subject, and, you know, if we were able to make it through because of that. So, was a little bit worried, I must say, but it wasn't the end of the world. Now, next part... Oh, this was a doozy. So, initially, Lance was a little bit troublesome, I must point out. I mean, honestly, the first Pokemon is a Gyarados. It really isn't the most solid thing to go up against, but luckily, though, Fire Blast is just way too overpowered. At this point, we grinded to infinity, so the jump in levels was really, really necessary, you know, to make it through this one. And luckily, a few burns here and there against, like, his Dragonite and whatnot really came in handy. Uh, of course, you know, these guys, they have a bunch of full restores, so they're a little bit, you know, annoying with that sort of stuff. But, um, luckily, though, we made it through somehow, and Flamethrower was a saving grace, I must say, uh, against, like, his team, because he had these two Dragonairs at the end, which, uh, luckily, we managed to to smash through and yeah it was honestly pretty perfect now the next one and this i gotta make sure to point something about, about this next battle okay so i spent a solid one hour and 30 minutes okay trying to defeat this one champion here and this champion battle was so annoying and you'll hear my reaction in the end here i'll actually play my real reaction from when i actually finished this like this is me doing the voiceover now the actual gameplay um you know and all that stuff but i want to show you guys the actual reaction I had when I finally defeated him because his Blastoise was the biggest problem. I had to actually use double team to lower his, like to increase my evasiveness to make it through and finally got a lucky draw against him. And luckily he missed extreme speed here and that was what made me take down his Arcanine. And ladies and gentlemen, enjoy here my true reaction. <laughs> let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's fuck! Oh, let's go, dude! <laughs> They took it freaking as they took him and okay now team Mabrur. Oh <laughs> let's go brother Brother I saw you also make a footage for a champion the pot that it does So this is the quite all nothing about it We did it we did it Aoe Oh eh 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 come here eh eh sing with me eh 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 Oh my god. 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 Score buddy! Look at him! Ah, he's so cute! Look at him, dude! Look at this dude! Look at the shape of his head! He did it! He won all of Kanto on his own! Let's go! Let's get it! Let's get it! Let's get it! 